Hey guys, how's it going? Sam here. So today I'm going to be showing the basics of Maya. Now this is going to be the very basics, so if you already have a grasp on how to use 3D software, this might not be the video for you. But for anyone that's maybe a bit scared to get into 3D modeling, it's always been a bit daunting when you open up the software, this is probably the perfect video. This is going to be based from my view as a 2D artist and how you can use 3D to help your 2D illustrations. It's not coming from a mindset of creating game quality 3D assets as a 3D modeler. I'm going to be showing you basically the simple techniques you can use as a 2D artist to render out some objects to start painting over them. As I mentioned in my previous video, I am looking to start an online mentorship. So if that is something that interests you, please find me on ArtStation, the link will be in the description below, and send me a direct message. I already have several people that are interested, so it is a kind of first come first serve basis. It will be at a heavily discounted price based on the fact that it's going to be a new venture for me. So if that is something that interests you and you want to find out more about that, please send me a direct message. Now, with the weird times that's going on currently, I hope everyone is safe and hopefully this content will be able to help a few people out if they have a little bit of extra time on their hands while they're at home. Let's get started. So to begin with, on the left hand side you'll see some different tools. You've got the select tool at the top, now if you scroll down you've got the move tool, the rotate tool and the scale tool. Now obviously this is really basic stuff but they are, to begin with, they're the only tools you're really going to need. So I appreciate when you first open this piece of software, it looks very scary. I completely understand that, but if you just stick to those um, tools to begin with, that's all you really need to know. Now, if you see here, I've got poly, poly modeling as a subheading, and under that you have these images of all of these um, different shapes. So you've got a sphere, you've got a cube, you've got a cylinder, and if you just click one of them, a cube, it will pop into the scene. So on the left hand side again, if I click the scale tool, brings up this. The center one makes it larger, uh, no matter uh, at a uniform scale, so it just makes the entire model bigger. And then using each axis makes each one uh, adjust. Now again, they all work just on their axis, so you're not going to have any issues with uh, you know skewing an object. The only shortcut I will be using is Control Z, which basically does anything that I've done. So that's that, and it works exactly the same with moving, and again, exactly the same with the rotate. So, now that we know how to create and move, so if I wanted to create another object, I can create another cube, and let's say I want to put it on top. So as you can see, it is really easy just to create these uh, really simple forms. Let's create another cube. I'm going to scale it. As you can see here. And move it down. I'm basically going to be using this as my floor. So if I hold right click on my object, it's going to bring up this menu. Now if I move my mouse over the heading, as you can see, and if I let go, it's going to select one of them. So if I right click and hold edge, it's gonna allow me to select edges. If I hold right click and click vertex, it's gonna allow me to select vertices. And same thing for faces. Again, they are the main selection tools you're going to be using. So again, right click and I'm gonna click face. So if you click on a face and move it up and down, you can see you can adjust the face. And that's the same thing goes for the edges, you can move an edge like that. So I'm going to select a face, click that, go to Edit Mesh and Extrude. Now I'm going to Scale, basically it moves it um, horizontally, which allows me to scale again. So if I go Edit Mesh, Extrude, and then move up, as you can see, I've instantly created this shape. So again, I'm going to select a face click on the face I want to select, and then we go Edit Mesh Extrude, and I'm going to go to Scale, and reduce the scale. So as you can see, I now have a face in the center of this top face. I'm going to go to Edit Mesh Extrude, and using the Transform tools that are already there, I'm going to use, I'm not going to do this, 
using the centre uh, square because then it could go off any angle. I'm going to use the blue line which forces me, no matter what way I move, to go straight down. And now I'm going to hold right click and go to object mode. I'm going to go to right click and edge. I'm going to click on an edge. Now if you hold shift and click on the other edges you can select multiple edges at once or you can click on one edge, hold down shift, double click the next one in the line and it will finish the loop. I'm now going to go over to the right hand side. You should be on the attribute editor as standard. I'm going to go to the modeling toolkit and I'm going to click bevel. So as you can see that adds a nice bevel. There should be a small box that comes up where it allows you to adjust the amount of bevel. So you've got fraction and segments, they're the main two you're going to need to worry about. If I change that to 0 0.2 rather than 0 0.5, it's going to make it smaller. If I change the segments to 3, as you can see, it rounds the object. Now I'm going to leave that at 1. And I just basically used undo there to go back. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. Hold down, right click, and choose edge. Click on one edge. Click on the next one and double click. And it will finish the loop. Click on bevel. Change the fraction to 0 0.2. And it's the same function. So as you see, really simple, really basic. I might do it one more time. Hold down edge, click, double click, bevel, 0 0.2. So as you can see, you can create some relatively complex shapes really quickly just using those basic tools. Now obviously there are a million different ways to do it. There may be better ways, there may be quicker ways, but that's just the way I use. And I recommend using that first. If you think there's you know, more you want to learn from the 3D software, then, then great, you know, experiment. Do everything you can to create the objects you want to create. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Now I'm going to create a sphere. So under poly modeling, I click the uh, polygon sphere. I'm going to scale that up, make sure it sits on the ground plane. Now as standard, it's going to be low poly, so you can see how large the faces are, they're quite large, this definitely is not a smooth sphere. Now that might be fine for what you're using it for, but for me I'm going to adjust that to make it a smooth sphere. So under the attribute editor on the right hand side, click polysphere and you can see subdivision axis. Now you've got subdivision height as well. If you adjust both of those all the way up to 50, you can see now the faces are a lot smaller and the sphere is much smoother. So selecting faces, I'm just going to do extrude again, just to show you, just to remind you of how that function works. Click on one face, double click on the, next, on the face next to it and it fills the entire loop. Do the one below it as well, the one below that, and the one above, and then I'm going to go edit mesh, extrude, and then using the blue, I'm going to go in, I could go out, but I'm going to go in. Now again, if you were to draw this shape, it'd be relatively complex, it might take you a while to, to learn how to use that. Hold down right click, go to object mode, and then deselect, and that's done. Now again, if I want to bevel, Hold down right click, edge, click on the edge, double click on the edge next to it. You can do this with multiple edges at once. So if I go this one here and then do that as well. And then go to modeling toolkit on the right hand side, hit bevel. And as you can see, that looks pretty good at 0.5 already. You can go up, you can go down. If you go too far, if I show you two, you can see these faces have gone black. If that happens in 3D, that's never a good thing. That means you've gone too far. It's basically you've broken the model essentially. So if I change that to one, just about okay. So we'll leave that there and deselect. So what I'm going to do now, if I click and drag all of my models, that selects all three of them. And if I hold down right click, at the bottom, you can see assign new material. Let go if you click. Now you can choose uh, several materials. Again, this is going to be quite scary for you to begin with. The one I want you to choose is ambient occlusion or standard surface. You don't really need to worry about anything else for now. So choose ambient occlusion. It's going to bring up a new box on your attribute editor on the right hand side. 
if you can see the little arrow at the top right, hold that down all the way to the right, you'll see ambient occlusion. Your samples will basically be the quality of the ambient occlusion. So I would put that all the way up to 10 and then deselect. Now to create a render, so basically we've just assigned a material. To create a render, you need to do two things. The first one is click the display render settings box. As you can see, I'm hovering over this now. It's the one with the little cog. Click that. Now this is basically where all of your settings for your render will be. You're going to be using Arnold Render and you can change the presets. You can choose, you know, um, 1K square, 2K square, or you can adjust the height and width yourself and change the resolution. So I'm going to go to a 2K square, click close, and then I'm going to go above it, Arnold at the top, Arnold Render View. That will bring up this box here. Now on the left hand side, you've got Beauty, which one you leave it at. And then you've got your um, perspective shapes. Now they basically are your cameras. So if I'm using this camera here and scroll out, that is this camera that I'm using. So if I scroll in, that will adjust the render. Now again, you can see this creates a beautiful ambient occlusion, which is really useful to be paint, to paint over as an artist, but you might want uh, lighting in your render. So if you want to do that, I'll show you that now. So basically to create a render I didn't mention, on the right hand side you've got the play button and the stop button. Now you can actually leave it running while you make adjustments, but if your computer is not an absolute beast then it may struggle and depends on the quality. With a 2K render you might struggle a little bit. So I always recommend stopping it and then making adjustments and then clicking play again. So we're going to leave that box open. We're going to select all of the objects again hold down right click, go to assign new material and I'm going to go down to AI standard surface. Now if I click play on the render view everything turns black. Now the reason it turns black is because we need a light source to pick up on these objects so that's what I'm going to be doing now. So if I go to create top left go down to lights and oh, go down to lights and go down to directional light now with 3D, much like 2D, there's always multiple ways of doing things. So you also can go to Arnold Lights and then choose a light there. Now the scale of this does not matter. It's just whatever scale works for you to make it visible and make it easier to use. So setting up a directional light, I can click play. And as you can see, it now renders with my shadows if I adjust arrow as I mentioned is quite slow because of the size of the file and there you go so I'm going to bring that slightly back click play and that doesn't look too bad now on the right hand side where it says directional light under your attribute editor you can see the intensity as you can see it's quite dark in the render so if I click 2 which was double what we had originally and click play it gets brighter now with this light source, obviously you are creating one directional light, it's really good for shadows, cast shadows. Not great just for a realistic light scene in general. So I'm going to show you one more light and then it's up to you to play around with what you think might work. So I'm going to click this light again and then reduce the intensity back down to one because that's going to give me the nice shadows that I want. So leave it there. Then I'm going to go to create, lights and area light. So create lights, area light. Okay, scale that up. Now this does work on scale. So the larger it is, the more light it's going to create. Now, as you can see, there is a line here. That is the direction of the light. So I'm gonna rotate that to face the objects in the scene. And quickly, if I keep play. going to do too much. I'm going to change it now to 30 and click play. Maybe raise it again to 50. There you go and you start to see a realistic light source. Now imagine painting this yourself in 2D. It might take a little while and you can see obviously if I was using shortcuts and I was doing this without talking to anyone I wasn't describing it I could maybe do this in one minute two minutes 
I think for this kind of work, it's very useful to use 3D for 2D work when you're creating especially hard, hard surface modeling. So we now have a complete scene and basically you've got everything you need to get going. Now, if you were to create a complex shape, obviously you, you're, you might be thinking, well, Sam, you just created one shape. That's not particularly useful. But every object in the world is created using these basic core shapes. You can create anything from them and you don't have to be a good 3D modeler. You don't have to create them as if they're going into a game engine, they can be messy. You can duplicate things and push and pull them. You can break models. As long as it works in your render as a 2D artist, it doesn't matter. You're talking about speed. You're not talking about a game engine asset. So as you can see, I've just created a cylinder, added it to the top of the sphere, I'm going to create the same material, and I'm going to click play, and again, you just, you know, you can create anything you want. So I really recommend you just use these techniques that I've shown you today, just to play around, just to push and pull objects to try and create a scene. You don't need to delve into really complex modeling, uh, duplicate loads of basic primitive shapes to create the objects that you want to create and then paint over them, use them as a guide. You, they don't need to be perfect in 3D, they just need to be a start. So thank you guys for watching, I appreciate I've only really shown the bare basics but I know for me they were the, the hardest parts to grasp when I first started learning and I feel like a lot of people were very daunted but when they open a, a piece of software like Blender or Maya so hopefully this information just gives you a start you can start throwing objects in to create a scene and start creating better artwork i would love to hear your thoughts if there's other areas of the 3d process that you feel like you really struggle with or there's something you really don't understand let me know in the comments as always if you've liked the video please give me a like and subscribe if you want to see more of my content in the future so thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you in the next video